Hi and welcome to Biostat Squid. This is part 3 of our tutorial series where we're going over the basic steps of pre-processing and quality checks of high throughput sequencing reads in R. If you haven't watched my previous videos on quality control and filtering, do that first, since in this video we will finish off our workflow by aligning or mapping the reads onto our genome. Let's dive in. Okay, so after quality check and potential pre-processing, the reads are ready to be mapped or aligned to the reference genome. This process simply finds the most probable origin of each read in the genome. Since there might be errors in sequencing and also mutations in the genomes, we may not find exact matches of reads in the genomes. That is why the previous steps of quality control and filtering out low quality reads is essential, but still alignment algorithms have to be able to tolerate potential mismatches between reads and the reference genome. To be more time and computationally efficient, these algorithms essentially create genome indices to be able to store and efficiently search the genome for matching reads. We will not go through the details of the different algorithms that are available out there, but we will use a bowtie aligner from the OR bowtie package, which is quite fast and memory efficient. We will use the QAlign function, which requires two mandatory arguments. First, a genome file in either FASTA format or as a BS genome package and second, a sample file, which is a text file and contains file paths to FASTQ files and sample names. So I will just show you how the sample file looks like. And well, if you want to adapt the sample file to your own sequencing files, you can do it by manually editing this but it is quite time consuming and error prone. So let's just write a little bit of code to help us create this file for us. So as you can see, we need two columns, one with the name of the files and the other with the name of the samples. So let's start with our file names. And remember that in part two, we, were, we filtered our FASTQ files, we trimmed the reads a bit, and we created the processed files, um, which are already pre-processed. So we will take those files, um, and we will also take the original chip fast, uh, FASTQ files, just to be able to compare how they align to the genome. But obviously, if you set up your pipeline, you're not really interested in keeping the original FASTQ files, but just the pre-processed ones. So we will do this with the grepl uh, function. And now we have our file names. So we have four file names, right? And now we can create sample names for them, but um, I will just use this uh, rep function to create sample one, sample two, sample three, sample four. Again, you this is up to you. You can change your sample names to something a bit more informative. Um, for example, chip one, chip two, processed one, processed two, or whatever you'd like. And we will use the cbind function to create a data frame, which we assign to the align text object. And now we just add column names to this um, data frame. And as you can see now, we have the two column names, file name and sample name, and our data. Nice. So we finally need to write out the table to a tab delimited text file. And these parameters here are essential if you want the align function to work. So we want to keep the column names, but not the row names. We don't want the elements or so different character strings to have quot quotation marks. And we need to set the separator to this. So now if you go to your original folder, you should see the table. Nice. So now we can just use the qalign function to align our filtered reads to the genome. 
You can read more about other arguments it takes, which can be optimized for different alignment problems. So, for example, if you're working with bisulfite sequencing, uh, so DNA methylation data and so on, it might need some extra steps. But um, this QAlign function will basically do a bit of magic and our results are stored in this project object. And for each input sequence file, there will be one BAM file with alignments against the reference genome. So as you probably know, BAM files are the files for sequence alignment, and they contain alignment data as well as everything in the FASTQ file. Now in this tutorial, we didn't use it, but you can add an auxiliary file which contains other sequences, which can also be used as additional targets to align reads that do not map to the reference genome. So you might get extra BAM files if they map to this auxiliary sequences. The BAM file names consist of the base name of the sequence file with an added random string. And what this random suffix does is it makes sure that alignment files that you generate do not overwrite existing ones. For example, of the same reads aligned against an alternative reference genome. And each alignment file will also have two additional files with it, with suffixes uh, .bai by and .text. So the by file is the BAM index used for fast access by genomic coordinates. And the text file contains all the parameters used to generate the corresponding BAM file, so you shouldn't delete it. Otherwise, Quasar won't be able to use the BAM file. If you want more information on um, file types, I can also make a video on that. So QuasR can produce a quality control report in the form of a series of diagnostic plots with details on sequences and alignments with this function uh, QQC report, which will export a PDF. Then the alignment stats gets the number of mapped and unmapped reads for each sequence file in the Q project object. And finally, if you want to visualize your alignment in a genome browser, the alignment coverage along the genome can be exported to, to a compressed WIC file using the QExport WIC function. And that is all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial. I really hope it was helpful. And thank you so much for your comments and support. Have a squid-tastic day and see you in the next one.